Hello, my name is Robin Shields. I'm a professor in the School of Education at the University of Bristol and Programme Director for the Policy and International Development Pathway of the MSc in Education. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Policy and International Development Programme, talk to you about our ethos for teaching and interacting with students on the course, and discuss what we look for in applicants to the programme. The Policy and International Development Pathway is an exciting programme for students interested in learning about the role of education in the international development field. In the course, we look at topics such as the role of education in the United Nations, develop, in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, progress towards international development targets for access and learning at schools. We also examine and discuss issues of equity, for example, inequality in access to education related to gender, ethnicity or race. And we discuss critically uh, the role of global power dynamics in the international development field. For example, how the international development field perpetuates colonial power relationships or represents large financial interests. When considering applications to the program, we look for students with a relevant undergraduate degree most likely one in the social sciences. However, we will also consider applications from students with a degree in an unrelated field, but relevant professional experiences. We prioritize applications from students with a good outcome from their first degree, for example, a 2-1 or higher in the UK or an internationally equivalent uh, outcome. We also look for willingness to engage and discuss topics related to international development. This should be reflected in your personal statement and also uh, you may wish to comment upon relevant work experience that you would bring to the program. We also look for strong writing and critical thinking abilities. Class discussions form a major part of interactions on the program and we are looking for people who will participate in these and bring original ideas as well as listen to others. And most of the assessment for the program is through written essays. And for that reason, strong writing abilities in academic English is an essential requirement. Each year, we recruit a diverse cohort of about 30 students from around the world. The map on this slide shows uh, the location of students uh, before they started their, their studies this year for the policy and international program. So you can see there's quite a geographic range. In the program, we look critically about what international development means today, and we're willing to consider this uh, with new eyes, afresh if you like, um, taking into account how the field has developed, but also looking at how, where it might go in the future. When you hear the term international development, you might think of a picture like one on the left. These are children outside a schoolhouse in Nepal and issues uh, in their education might be around the quality of education or the accessibility of education for children living in nearby villages and perhaps um, whether or not they can progress to secondary or higher education in the future. These are topics that have been commonly discussed in the field. However, if we were to think about the future, we might also consider international development and education as relating to the youth strike for climate pictured on the right. This was a march that took place in Bath in the year 2019, when many students walked out of school to demand urgent action on climate change. This arguably has just as much to do about international development in the future and will impact the lives of children in high income and low income countries alike. Our program is characterized by a synthesis of theory and practice. We read theoretical work and engage critically with issues in practice. So we will, through case studies in class and discussions, look at issues on the ground in developing countries but relate these to academic theory. There is an emphasis on critical analysis. So we expect our students to engage with works by synthesizing different perspectives, by formulating original arguments and supporting these through rigorous application of academic literature. We also emphasize learning from the global south. So it's not a northern centered program. We listen uh, or we 
emphasize the experience and knowledge of students from the Global South and also academics and organizations that work in the Global South. And we seek to integrate those into our analyses in class and encourage students to do the same in their written assessments. Here is the policy and international development team. Um, I'm pictured there in the top left, joined by my colleagues Arati Sriprakash, Raphael Mitchell, Angeline Barrett, Leon Tickley, Julia Paulson, and Michael Crossley, who is an emeritus professor on the program. To learn more about our research interests and where we have worked, it would be a good idea to look at our profile pages on the University of Bristol website. Across the team, we have a a great deal of experience working in the field of international development and conducting research in locations around the world, ranging from Papua New Guinea to South Asia to Sub-Saharan Africa and to Latin America. So we have very good regional expertise and a wealth of research experience also. The program is strongly affiliated with the Center for Comparative and International Research in Education, or SIRE. SIRE hosts regular seminars, reading groups, and other events, and students on the MSc in Policy and International Development are highly encouraged to attend these events and be active in the center's meetings and other social activities. It is a great hub and a way to meet other students, including students on the doctoral program and to learn from their experience uh, in your own master's studies. We also take a decolonizing approach to studying international development. This means we challenge white supremacy or the implicit belief that uh, the Legitimate knowledge is that which is developed in the global north, mainly by white scholars. We are all strong supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement and the universities support our statement in support of Black Lives Matter. We are also active in the decolonizing University of Bristol movement, which takes a critical appraisal of the university's past links to the slave trade. As you might know, the university was founded uh, partly with money that was raised through uh, capitalists involved in the uh, transatlantic slave trade. So that means that we have to take an active approach today to decolonizing the university and ensuring it promotes social justice in teaching and research. For that reason, we take an active anti-racist, anti-sexist and anti-ableist approach. The university in the past or universities in the past have been dominated by a relatively small section of global society. And we seek to change that to make it a space that represents the diversity of uh, society globally. And we ask students to be active agents in challenging any uh, forms of prejudice or discrimination in the university. The course structure involves three compulsory or core units in the first semester, which is called Teaching Block One at the university. These are education policy in a global context, international development, comparative research and education, and introduction to educational inquiry. The last of these is taken by all MSc students in preparation for the master's dissertation. In the second semester, you will take education, peace and sustainable development, and two optional or elective courses uh, from all those offered in master's programs at the School of Education. After that, you will complete a master's thesis, which is undertaken through an individual study uh, supervised by one member of the academic team. And then congratulations, you have passed your master's and are ready to go off and use the knowledge that you have uh, acquired here to create a better world. Common choices for the options or electives in the second semester include education, inequality and social justice, the dynamics of global higher education, globalization and the politics of English, and exploring and visualizing data in education. You can explore the School of Education's unit catalog to find other units that you might take as options in semester two. Students who complete the master's go on to a range of future employment and further study opportunities. These include roles in charities and NGOs working in the international development sector. 
Additionally, they work in government and local government, both in the UK and in developing countries. Many have gone on to further studies at the doctoral level in higher education or to work in research organizations and consultancies uh, related to international development. And increasingly, there are opportunities in the so-called third sector, including roles in corporate social responsibility or social enterprises that might be of interest for graduates from our program. So I hope this has given you a good overview of the policy and international development pathway. It is a unique program which is characterized by its commitment to social justice and critical perspectives on the field of education and international development. If you, this interests you, then we would love to see your application and don't hesitate to get in touch with our admissions team if you do have any questions about the program. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.